So one of the first steps is the demo work itself. I'm taking my time and getting rid of all the decorative rocks that I had lining the lengthwise of my backyard. This was really kind of working as an edging system. Now I will say if you want to speed up this project and make it a little bit less tedious on you, uh, I recommend getting yourself a wheelbarrow. It took me about five years to convince myself to spend the money on it, but once you get it, I tell you what, it helps you with taking the dirt out, the rocks, bringing the new pavers in. It's gonna take a little bit of a load off your back, but trust me, you're gonna appreciate it. Now to give yourself a guide to follow to ensure that you don't have a wonky slope or a low spot in your backyard, as well as a straight edge, I'd recommend running a string from one side of the yard to the other side and securing it, making sure it's leveled and it's following the line that you'd go with. Then I'd use a little bit of marking paint on the ground. This kind of be your secondary safety net in case the string was to break with the shovel. Once that's established, then you start digging out a trench. Now these trenches, when it comes to laving paper stone or retaining walls, they recommend between five and seven inches inches of digging in depth. Uh, you get away with five, but seven is kind of the gold standard. Once you get that done, make sure that the width of the trench will accommodate your pavers the, for the retaining wall, which in my situation, 14 inches will do it. Now, I can't emphasize the importance of setting down a good foundation. You wanna lay down about four inches of road gravel mix. Make sure it has good solid rocks in there that will act as both strength, but more than that, as a water drainage system. So when the ice or the snow melts or the rain accumulates or the sprinklers even get in there, the retaining wall won't be lifted up and moved out of place or even get wavy on you. Once everything's in place, go over it with a tamper, tamp everything down. I believe this one's a nine inch that I got from my local Home Depot. For the next layer, you'll need to lay down one inch of masonry sand. The sand acts both as a seat, but also a tool to level each stone as they're stacked one by one. Now, you don't need to create this area to be super straight and flat. So in this situation, you can just use a rake to kind of even out the areas to prevent it from having kind of high spots. Make sure you don't tamp this section down because you need it to be fluffed in order to actually seat the bricks themselves. All right, so this is where it all comes down to. The first layer is always the hardest and the most stressful because it sets the tone and the pace for the rest of the wall. If you screw up the first layer, the rest of the wall is gonna be crooked and it's just gonna follow that. There's no fixing that. So take your time and catch your breather and really think what you're doing. When it comes to installing or setting them, gently place it right over the sand. Use a little torpedo or a small little level to ensure that it's not tilting left to right or back to front. Once it's in place, then it's set. The rest of them kind of become a little bit easy in the sense that just butt up the next one to the right of it or to the side of it and then work your way from making sure that it's balanced from that point on. Certain areas will need a little bit of extra love so use a little rubber mallet to give it a few taps to ensure that it sets right in place. And then just continue your line making sure that it doesn't go above or below that string that you set up earlier. Now retaining walls, they fail for many reasons and almost all of them are due to inadequate water drainage. That's why they recommend adding about 12 inches of gravel right behind the wall up to the very top of it to accommodate the flow of water that builds up there to drain. Now in certain situations, depending on your layout, you might even have to consider putting in a fenestrated pipe at the bottom to help out with that as well. When I was finished with the, all the layers, I capped off the wall using the Pro Moro 3 by 5 by 14 inch wall caps and I secured them by using a heavy duty concrete adhesive that I got at my local Home Depot and it's very easy. You got to make sure the area is dust free, lay down a good bead and then start setting the caps exactly where they need to go. They want to make sure that it's uh, dry from any kind of rain for about 24 hours and then everything should be solid from there on. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. It means the world to me. Like, comment, and share it with your friends. If you're brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button right there. We put a video out every single week. 
tap that notification bell, you'll be alerted every single time that video comes out. Make sure you follow me on social media. I'll put a link down below in my description. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.